praise the Lord the elders will sing with another elder you are Alpha please come and help me we worship you God you are Thank you. Thank, thank him. Thank him. Oh, thank you for this church. Thank God for the seal. Thank God for his family. Thank God for the entire ministers and the workers. That God has kept us this far. Thank God for the various uh, testimonies we have had. Oh, thank him. Thank him. Thank him. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, October is the 10th month of the year. And it is a symbol of double grace. So that you are alive, you are entitled to double grace. If you will live in, you know, for God. So you want to just thank the almighty God. That this month, you will enjoy a taste of his amazing grace. Talk to the almighty God. That I will experience his love this month. In this month, double grace is mine. The almighty God will move me higher. Talk to the almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You know, Esther, I want us to pray before we go into the Word. We are going to be looking at the Word, living for God. But first and foremost, this is a new month. This month must be soaked with prayers so that we will achieve a great, uh, a great achievement this month in the name of Jesus. Esther chapter 2, 16 to 17. Esther 2, 16 to 17 reads, it says, So Esther was taken unto the king Isaiah into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebet, in the seventh year of his reign. Esther, uh, and the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead. You want to pray for yourself that this month the Lord will connect you to the top. Talk to the Almighty God, will connect you to the top. The people that matter, you will be able to meet with them this month, this very month. They will help, they will help you. They will help you. In this 10th month, talk to him that you will receive grace and favor before them. Anywhere you go this month, you will receive grace and favor. Grace and favor. Grace and favor. Your, le your head will be lifted up. Talk to the Almighty God. You will be head, you will not be tail. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Please be seated in his presence. First and foremost, we want to thank the elders. We want to say congratulations to the elders of the house. You know, yesterday we had, you know, if you weren't there, don't worry. But we had a good hangout. There was a potluck. And everybody enjoyed themselves with different questions from above. But this day we are going to uh, continue with where we stopped. On, on Friday, we were here to talk about living for God. And I'm going to just take a little bit summary for those of you who are not, not around. But if you will avail yourself to the recordings or you watch on TV or on uh, YouTube, it will be a great thing. Living for God. The Bible text will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 to 15. 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 15. I'm going to read at this time the Amplified Version. It says, for the love of Christ controls and compels us because we have concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all so that all those who live will live, no longer live for themselves, but him who died and was raised for their sake. When you combine the three, uh, the various versions that we read on, on Friday, we read the KJV, we read the NLT, and the Amplified Version. When you combine everything, it says, we judge, we believe, and we have concluded that Jesus died for all. And why is this? So that those who live, when you are living, or who receive his new life, or all those who, who live should no longer live for themselves, but live unto Christ who died for them. Christ died for all of us. And rose again, who died and was raised for them, and who died and was raised for their sake. So in other words, all of us, if we decide to live for him, it's better to, to, to live for God than to live for yourself. No, many, many people will say, I'm living for my, my father, I'm living for my mother, or I'm living for my daughter, or whatever. Or I'm living for things that are not meaningful. You can live for your job because you want to make a career. You can live, and then you say, I'm, I'm living because I have these very, this various properties God has blessed me with. They are nothing. You are enjoying them, but they are idols if you don't love God. God wants you to love him and to love him with all your heart. And that's what God wants. And that's what this wants. I mean, the elders, they have chosen to do. And that's why they have chosen the, the theme, living for God. They have made up their minds that they are going to live for God. And I pray that the younger ones too will make up their minds today that they will live for God. In the name of Jesus. You know, we look, at this, uh, we look at some examples in the scriptures. We talked about Paul, who decided to go to Jerusalem, even though people were telling him, don't go, don't go, because affliction awaited him. But he chose to go because he loved God and he was ready to die for God, for the cause of God, and also to please God. We also looked at uh, Daniel, who refused to divide himself with the king's food to please God. He proposed in his heart not to defile himself. You know, when you look at all this, it's needful for us to make up our minds what we want to do, whether to love God, whether to serve him, whether to continue in his way or not. You know, when you come in contact with some people, your lives will be different. And that is, thank God we prayed some prayers that people should surround them with some, you know, good people. When you look at the life of Daniel, he surrounded himself with three boys, three Ibu boys, who have also, who also prepared themselves that no matter what, they will please God alone. I'm hoping and I'm praying that in this congregation we have people that will live for God alone. 
people will have determined, no matter what I'm passing through, no matter the situation, that I'm going to live for God. Is there such people in the house? Shout hallelujah. That was what he did. And for me, I'm very grateful to God that I was privileged to meet with the CEO here and his wife and the family. I've even slept in their house before. You know, the thing is that when you meet with a person and you start to look at them from outside, you will know how they are. But I told you here on Friday that if you are looking for an example, living example of people living for God, I have tested them. And I know they are living for God because they are following Christ. And besides, you know, they are my seniors. And I chose them to be my friends because even when I need, you know, I call him, you know, MOG, man of God. I call him that. But out of three of us who are called so, I call him holy man of God. And most of the time I say senior MOG, you know, because, you know, all his teachings, you will see is about God and love for God. And the same thing with our mommy. And I pray that the almighty God himself will continue to use you in all areas in Jesus' name. You know, the CEO moved from glory to glory. He was country coordinator. <laughs> then he became the DCO and now the CO. I want to appeal to all of us here. If you want them to succeed, I would like us to have some few people that will be praying for them constantly. You know, I told them on Thursday, on Friday, I was made by my pastor, the, the coordinator, spiritual coordinator of uh, my parish in Lagos. And I was wondering what I was supposed to do. And I found out that one of the things that I have to do is to pray for the church and also pray for my pastor. From 1998 till now, I'm still praying for my pastor. From 1999, I never cease. So we want people like that to lift them up. The work is enormous now. It's not that they can carry it, but God can help them. But you will be able to put them on your altar and pray for them continuously and continually. You know, in, uh, in, my, in our parish in those days, I used to have some elders in the church, but one of them, I can tell you, she was always praying for me. I can see it, I can see it even in the spirit, that she was totally praying for me. And I have one or, one or two right now, even after we've been there for 25 years. So you please make up your mind that while you want to live for God, you must lift up your pastor, that they must not, they must not fail. They must, they must not what? Fail and they must not fall. You know, there are temp temptations here and there. Even though you say you are, you are born again, you are living for God, and then temptation comes. Let me share one experience with you. Some years back, we gave our lives to Christ, the same testimony by somebody else, and then my old girlfriend saw me and said, Oh, Lou, when are you going to take me out? I said, I'm not taking you out again. I'm born again. He said, but before you go, just have one with me now. Let's go. I said, no, I'm not going anywhere. I have sold my life to Christ, and nothing can change it. But to the glory of God, I introduced her to a parish in, Ob uh, in Agbara Estate, and there she gave her life to Christ. If I have defiled myself because of uh, mundane things, I won't be able to stand before you. So let's praise the Almighty God. We just want to thank God. You know, in Lagos, when I love to use my personal experience in some of these things. While living for God in Lagos, the elders who will come to the church when they see in a cinema theater with iron chairs. And those things, you know, they can cut your, if I lost a, a couple of clothes. So the elders will come very early before seven o'clock We'll bring newspapers. We'll be talking it into those uh, holes so that people will be coming. And then it was a place that was smelling. But all of us, people will come with their camphor and they would just throw it around the whole place to make sure that the people will be coming will be comfortable in the theater. That's the sort of thing that God is expecting from all of you if you want to live for him. 
And I know he will do wonders for you in the name of Jesus. Let me take two more of those uh, people that uh, lived for God in the scriptures. One is Simeon. In Luke chapter 2, 25 to 30, we are not going to be reading, but Luke 2, 25 to 30. The Bible says the man was a just and a devout man, filled with the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost was upon him, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And Jesus came to the temple one day. He was moved to get into the temple. All his life he was just expecting the coming of the Almighty God. And now God is expecting that we should be expecting his return, Jesus' return. How many of us are, are, are doing that? There's a need for us to keep it up so that we don't lose track. People will say, it's been, he said it's coming, he has not come. And they start to do whatever they like. But he can come any day. If he doesn't come, death can come. But you won't die long, uh, young because you have a covenant in this house. Amen. And the Lord will keep it for you in Jesus' name. Another one is an 84-year-old man, prophetess. And the Bible says that this woman, Anna, that she got married for seven years to a husband. Even the man met the virginity. I don't know why the scriptures will write such things. But uh, you, know, you, you know what we mean. And she was 84 years old. And she started fasting and praying, staying in the church to ensure that she will see Christ when she comes. And just then, she met him, met Jesus Christ in the temple. I pray for you, whatever you are trusting God for that is delayed, the almighty God will quicken it to come in the name of Jesus. You will not lose your time in his presence. Today is the day that you will know for sure that God has visited you indeed. In the name of Jesus. The grace of God will be upon you. His favor will be upon you. It will be upon your family. In the name of Jesus. Let me give you one more. The reason is this. There's a young, there was a young man in the scripture, Joseph. You know, he refused to offer, to take the offer given to to him by the wife of his boss, Potiphar. Mrs. Potiphar tried to seduce him, but he flee. Bible says we should flee from all appearances of evil. Don't stay there when you are, you know, when you are together with uh, the opposite sex, you are thinking one day I'm going to marry, but temptations can always arise. And God will help you in the name of Jesus. This man suffered for, for God. He was in prison for things he didn't do. Even in the prison yard, he became the head, head of uh, the prisoners. That everything was put in charge of him. Please write down Genesis chapter 39. And then you go to Genesis 41, 38 to 46. The man, the, the king dreamt, and there was no solution. Nobody could solve the problem, but Joseph so was able, through the Holy Spirit, was able to give comfort to the king. And the king was looking, was saying that he recommended, not only found solution, he recommended that the king should put somebody in charge. And the king said, could we find any man as discreet as this? In your office, in your study, in your school, people will find you different from others. In the name of Jesus. You have to present yourself in a way that you will always be at the top of affairs. And you will be a problem solvers in the name of Jesus. You will solve problems. You will provide solution. So the day this man met with, uh, with the king, his life changed. He received more than almost 10 or 11 gifts that same day. I pray for you that miracles will happen in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. But the Bible tells us, stressed it, that when the man met with the, the, the king, he was 30, 30 years old. So I'm telling you, if you are 30 years old, today we, we are praying for you. Because that's the starting point of being a man. Jesus started his ministry at 30. And we will soak you in the blood of Jesus. Soak you in prayers that the almighty God will make sure that you fulfill your purpose in life 
in the name of Jesus. But you will live for him. You make up your mind you are going to live for God, and God will do his own concerning you. And I decree to you, decree that it is well with you, in the name of Jesus. The almighty God himself will see you through, in the name of Jesus. We must always thank the almighty God, because God made it possible that we are dead. We are already dead to sin. But, you know, many a times we think once we are born again, that's the end. It's not the end, it's just a starting point. But we have to keep up. Tell somebody you have to keep up. Keep up living for God, loving God. When you love him, he will love you. In fact, you have nothing to offer him, but he still loves you the way you are. If you have gone astray, you've gone far away, you need to come back home. Things are happening all over the world that, you know, in recent times, recently we just found out, you know, while I was here, I received an information that one, one of the people in uh, Boston side, that uh, a young boy was shot by a friend of his, and he died there. But we pray for all of you here that you will not die young. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you will not keep company with people who will mess up your lives. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will tell them, like Joseph and Daniel, that we are all for God, for God alone, as young people. And the Almighty God will help you in Jesus' name. But quickly, we want to just look at some expectations for living for God. God has expectations. Number one, is a lot, but I will just pick a few of them because we, are, we still have so many other things to do in this short period of time. Number one is that God expects you to live to please him alone in all that you do. God wants you to do what? Please, live to please him alone. If somebody is telling you to go the wrong way, you say, God, in the word of God, it, is, it doesn't say that. You look at the word of God as a guideline in all that you do. And thank God that's what has helped us. You know, I, as a person, I started very late Christian race. I was born into an Anglican church. And in the Anglican church, you know, you can even ask them to remove your, your vicar anytime. You know, you can tell them, you just, all you need to do, connect with the bishop. I want this man. We don't want him again in this church. And they remove him. But thank God in RCCG, you cannot do that. You must have your reasons. And the, the leadership must look through it. Well, I pray God will be with each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Please write down Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. And also John 14, 21 to 24. I just I told them on, the, on Friday... That is not, this is not a marriage seminar because whatever God asks you to do, you have to do it or else God will not be in your house. He said, if he gives you instructions, you will do what he has asked you to do. All you need to do is to obey whatever God says. And once he says it, it is done. You know, so we should learn to know that it's not, you know, in marriages, marriages are failing. More because people will say, I will look after myself, look for myself. That's selfishness. When you look for yourself, you don't care about your spouse, that's a problem. By the grace of God, I've been, we've been married for 52 good years. They say marriage is terrible, but it's sweet for me. <laughs> sweet in the sense that my wife is patient. And I'm also trying to be patient. <laughs> so we complement each other. You, you understand me? Sometimes I tell her, I say, I love you. She say, are you sure? I say, what about you? This morning I've called her before she went to church over there. You know? And uh, that, that's the, the end of the story was, I love you. You know, many men, particularly Nigerian men, I'm sorry, this is not a Nigerian church. They don't want to say I love you to their wives. But if you are there, your wife is in the house, stand up. Are you, uh, I, I'm asking you, you, you are, your wife is in the house with you, stand up. 
anyone, including <laughs> MOG. Thank God. Just look by your side and say, Lo my love, I love you. Please. <laughs> you know, Christendom, you know, in this world, you know, the reason is this. Our children, they are looking at us. How we are treating their mothers. You understand me? They are looking. And they want you to treat their, their mothers right. I say it's not the marriage seminar. But I don't know why God is bringing it back. Maybe there's somebody here. Your, your marriage is in trouble. They are trouble. Please see us after service. We will need to pray. And the Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. Number two is that God expects you to be grateful that you are a new creation in Christ. He wants you to be grateful. Please write down Isaiah chapter 61 verse 10. Today is a Thanksgiving Sunday. And by the grace of God, let me read this passage. He says, I will, re I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be full, shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. Let he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. I'm pretty sure that when you become born again, you become a new creature, you should thank God that you are not, you are not your old self. You are now a new person. And the Lord will see you through. You will not fall. You will not fail. In the name of Jesus. Please also write down Ephesians chapter 24, verses 22 to 27. Ephesians 4, 22 to 27. And the Almighty God will help each and every one of us to be ready to serve the Lord and love him and live for him alone in the name of Jesus. Number three is that God expects you to live a new life of reconciliation and be an ambassador for him. Please write down 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. You see, ministry of reconciliation is very important. And that is where families are failing. People don't want to reconcile with their wives or with their spouse. They say, this is what I want, and that's it. And that creates more problem. But where is love about the day you met yourselves, the first day? I remember the first time I met my, my wife. Each time I'm thinking about anything, that's the first day. I, first of all, we'll go back to that day I saw her, and I saw the smile. And it was the smile that really attracted me. And she's still smiling. So if you are frowning at your spouse, be careful. You don't want to push him out, and they will not go out. In the name of Jesus. We are looking at God, God's expectation for living for God. Number four is that God expects you to love and meditate on his word daily. He wants you to do what? Love and meditate on his word daily. Please write down Psalm 119, 97 to 99. Psalm 119, 97 to 99. Also number five, God expects you to receive the spirit of God not the spirit of the world, to understand the things of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12. It says now, 1 Corinthians 5, 12, 2, verse 12. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You know, you need to have the spirit of God directing you in all things. You know, uh, some years back, my pastor said, we went for a retreat at the camp for three days. He said, no food. That was the first time I experienced when I joined the church, how to fast without food. He took us out of the area to the camp. So there, there was no place to buy any food or water. And then he said, at a point during the meeting, he said, please, I want you to go out for 10 minutes and go and hear from God. And come back and let us hear what God says. To hear from God. You know, I was from the Anglican setting, the background setting. And now he's saying, go and hear. So I said, okay. We went. 
God gave me a couple of things. I had some things that I wrote down. I was able to deliver two of them. The third one, I held on to it. The spirit did not let me rest. Say, give it to my son. Give it, give it. You know what was there? We wanted to buy a property. We have already paid for that property, that land. And I was the one, as the leader of the elders, who took the check to the, to the lawyer. And now, God says, I should tell him that's not the land that he wanted for us. You know, it's a tough one. And I know my pastor will smack me that day. So finally, I submitted it. When we gathered together, I was expecting him to chastise him. You know, what type of, how, how did you hear that kind of nonsense? Then he said, he announced. He said, two of our brothers, they, saw, they said, God said that our land is not our land. You know, two people confirmed, two of us. And the brother that said he's a younger man to me, who happened to be in my same prayer group, he saw the same thing. And so I had peace. Pastor had peace. He now called me, he said, Brother my dear, go and look for, go and talk to God to give us a land. <laughs> you know? So that was a trouble. That was really trouble. But thank God, God is faithful. Once you are faithful, God will be faithful. You know, I was a young man, even though I was old. I was about 45, older than my pastor. But he said, go and pray, go and talk and bring the result. And by the time I got, so he said, go and look for, go, you tell God to show you where we are going to be. So we did, by God's grace, we had a headquarters there now. You know, but, you know, it is good to hear from God when you connect with the Spirit. And the Spirit will help you. You know, so invariably, uh, we now found out when I went to the lawyers concerning the land that the owner of the land, the woman who sold the land, who the husband didn't want him to have to sell it to us, died. So when the man got uh, saw that the wife was, uh, was dead, he said he was not selling again. And that uh, he was going to give that land to the Pope. You know where Pope is? In Italy. And we were in Nigeria. He said he was going to, he's a Catholic, and he's going to give it to the Pope. But thank God, God provided the alternative for us. And that's the thing you must be able to expect, expect to receive the Spirit when you are living for God. Finally, let me just do one more. Let me do one more. Are, there's a lot to be learned, but let me take this one. It says, God expects you to love your brother and have eternal abiding in you. And eternal life abiding in you and not death. Please write down, not death, but abide, you will all have abiding uh, eternal life abiding with you in the name of Jesus. First John 3, 13 to 15. First John 3, 13 to 15. And the, that means when there is no love, it means you are abiding in death. So don't hate your brother or else you are considered as a murderer, and you will not be a murderer in Jesus' name. God also expects us to pass living for God. Sorry, let me give you this final one. That he wants you to pass the living for God on to the next generation. We are to hand over to the generation behind us. The young ones must know about God. They must know how to love, for, love God, and the Lord will help them in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 1. 3 to 5, 2 Timothy 1, 3 to 5. You know what? The reason is that the DNA in us must continue. My DNA brother is sitting. The CEO himself. DNA is very important. You know, and that's the one that uses you to connect with other people. Let's quickly look at a few benefits. A few benefits for living for God because it's very important. Number one is that God remembers and calls you by name and his presence and protection will be with you. God's protection will be with you when you live for him. Please write down Isaiah chapter 43, 1 to 2. Isaiah 43, 1 to 2. Number two is that the eyes of the Lord watches over you and he will hear your cries and deliver you out of trouble. That is when you live for him. 
When you live for him, you have benefits. That's number two benefit. But please write down Psalm 34, 15 to 18. Psalm 54, 15 to 18. It says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Let me read verse 17. It says, the righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and delivereth them out of their troubles. And when you look at verse 18, it says, the Lord is nigh unto, very near unto them that are of a broken heart. And save it such as be of a contrite spirit. So when you, when, when you live for him, you have a lot of benefits. But one thing that I must tell you is that we should not look at benefits more than loving God. We must love God whether he gives us or he doesn't give us. Are you, are you, are you clear on that? Love him whether, he, whether he's going to give you or not. There are so many benefits. Let me give you one more. There are many benefits. Number, five, uh, number three, let me put it that way. It says you have the ability to share the amazing news with others. Whatever God has done for you, you'll be able to share it with others because it's a plan. Once God does something for you, you go and give, people give their testimonies here today. And the testimonies are supposed to encourage us to take us to the next higher level. You know, one time... We were in Israel, and then I met with somebody that day who happened to be a former uh, member of our own church. I met her in Israel. And then she said she didn't have a child after so many years of marriage. And she said, Daddy, I want you to please agree with me in prayers concerning the fruit of the womb. And she also blessed me with $200 that day. And I was wondering... By the grace of God, the following year, she came all the way from Nigeria to deliver in California. And it was there that she had a set of twins. And by the grace of God, after that, the Lord promoted them. They became the governor of our state in Lagos. See, God works miraculously. So if you are expecting a miracle, God will always give it to you. If you are living for him, if you decide to be very close to him, and he will do great and mighty things for you today in Jesus' name. But the thing is that you must move away from darkness. Darkness cannot be in your life. I expect God to do something. And uh, I want to give the opportunity this morning to people who have not even decided to know Jesus himself. Because unless you know him, unless you are close to him, you, cannot, you will not be able to live for him, not to talk of getting benefits from him. So I want us to bow down our heads because we are still going to do one or two things. And unless you have Christ in you, the other things we are going to do is going to be difficult. Are you there? All eyes bow down. Please lift up your hands if you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life. And if you have lost it, you've lost your, 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 your love for God. I want you to tell him to renew his love with you today. Talk to the almighty God. Talk to him. Talk to him. And the Lord will do it for you in Jesus' name. One thing I know, by the grace of God, you can lift up your heads, is that there are needs in this house. I can tell you, I'm feeling it in the spirit, that some people, they have needs. They have been praying for concerning issues, and they, there is no breakthrough. If you are in that category, let me quickly pray with you. Stand up, come to the altar, let us pray for you. You have a need. You have prayed, there is no result. Don't look at anybody else. You just come. God sends his word, and his word will heal them. And that's the only thing. Just come quickly. Let's come quickly. Because God has a purpose for bringing us here at this time. And the purpose will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Just come quickly. There are needs in your heart. You have prayed and nothing happened. Just quickly come. You know, some years back, I used to lay hands on, on people. And a lot of people like you now, I cannot lay hands on you. But we prayed. I prayed with my old friend that God should help us not to lay hands on people, but to speak the word and let it happen. And God is doing it. So one thing, as you are here, please just quickly talk to the almighty God for two minutes. Talk to him.
Tell him exactly what your problem is. And tell him you will give your testimony. Just talk to the Almighty God. Talk to him. He's in the house. Talk to him. It's God that answers prayers. You don't have to cry, shout out. You have been doing it. You have been crying all night concerning this issue. It's tough for you. But God knows that he has something for you today. Oh, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Please, all of you in the front, I want you to do something for me. In Jesus' name. Please lift up your hand, right hand. The reason is I'm going to use my own hand to be a contact point for you. And we are looking unto God for help. And I'm in agreement with all of you that those things that you are trusting him for, you will come back with your testimonies in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for these ones. With their hands lifted up unto you, we look unto you. You are the author and finisher of our faith. We are grateful unto you. We look unto you, unto the hills, from whence cometh our help. Our help cometh only from you. Please answer these ones by fire in the name of Jesus. Let them come back rejoicing. In Jesus' name we pray. Please go back to your seats. The Lord bless you. Just rejoice that God has answered you. God has answered you. Just go and sit down. The last category of people, those people who are 30 years, you are just 30 years, or you are going to be 30 years this year, or you are just above 30, just above 30, I want to pray for you. Just stand up wherever you are. You are 30, or you are just about 30. Just stand up. It's because we don't have much time. The reason is that God uses people when you get to about the age of 30, your life is just beginning. My life started around that time. Joseph's life started like that when he met with the king. So let us pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful for all these young ones that are bringing down to ministry. We're asking your special way, please bless them. In their time, let them be useful. Make them heads and not tail. Let them fulfill purpose in the name of Jesus. Every plan you have for them, let them be able to fulfill. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please, brethren, just rise up for one minute or so. I have two minutes or so. But I just want you, if you know, before we pray, if you know you'll be praying for this uh, continent, just lift up your hand. It's a covenant you are making with God. I won't come to ask you, but you will know that you are making it, I've done such things before, that you will be responsible for praying for the success of this church, growth of this church, people of this church, you'll be praying for them, pray for the pastorates and the ministers and workers. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful to you for all these ones that want to serve you. They want to live for you. Please empower them with the ministry of intercession in the name of Jesus. When they ask you anything, please answer them in the name of Jesus. Because they are making a covenant today with you. Please, everything that concerns them, correct them and do wonders for them. And Lord, let your name be praised. Father, when we are going to be coming back, let it be good news. Thank you, glorious Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Overcomers, the Lord bless you.